So, do you feel like you've tried every single eyedrop at the store, but still nothing just seems to work? And maybe you've even seen an eye doctor and gotten a prescription treatment, but still the eyes aren't healing and your eyes are still dry. Well, the reason your eyes may not be getting any better is because we all tend to neglect the seven bad habits that make dry eyes worse. So today we are gonna review the seven common habits and share some tips on how to fix them. First off, a lot of my patients who come into the clinic who are complaining of dry, irritated eyes all tend to share a common lifestyle. And I hate to say it, but I'll admit, this is something I am very guilty of too. And that is of excessive screen use. Research has shown that we don't blink as often when we're hyper-focused on digital screens. And when we do blink, we also tend to not blink our eyes completely, meaning our eyes are more exposed to open air and our tear film is more likely to evaporate much faster. So if you can, try to make intentional efforts to reduce your screen time and reduce your digital eye strain. As the more you strain and try to hyper-focus on a screen, the more likely you are to have problems with your blinking patterns. Number two is that of neglecting your surroundings, as many things in our environment can contribute to dryness of the eye. When you're outside, certainly wind is a common culprit, but when you're indoors, you have air conditioning, you have heating, you have fans that you may be using, and then even allergies and even the humidity of where you live can all be factors. To help with this, you can get a pair of wide wrapping sunglasses so when you're outside, wind won't hit your eyes from the side, causing them to dry out faster. When you're indoors, turn any fans, air conditioning, or heating vents to point away from your face. Some people do have benefit from using humidifiers in their bedroom, their office, or other living spaces. But as far as allergies, those are a little bit more challenging to manage. So just be aware of what you could be allergic to and try to eliminate those from your living areas. There are also eye drops specifically for allergies, but certainly talk to your doctor if they think those are the best option for you as some medications for allergies can make dry eyes worse. Now, number three is something that I see a lot of in the eye clinic. When we examine the eyelids and eyelashes under a microscope, we often see a large buildup of skin oils, dead skin cells, and even gross little eyelash mites that live and burrow inside of our eyelash follicles. And the presence of all of this leads to inflammation of the eyelids, which we refer to as blepharitis. And that includes symptoms of redness, irritation, and may contribute to blockage of the oil glands in the eyelids, which happens to be a major contributing factor for dry eye disease. So try to clean your eyelids and eyelashes every one to two days with some form of an eyelid wipe or eyelid cleanser. There's many different brands of these sort of products on the market, but I'll put some of my favorites in the description below so you can check those out if you want. But this will keep your eyelids and eyelashes clean so you don't get that nasty buildup of gunk and irritation. Number four is unfortunately a very common problem. There are many different artificial tears and eye drops on the market and many people just reach for the first one they see. And this oftentimes leads to not only those drops not working very well, but also in some cases may even make their dry eyes worse. The common culprits for this are the get the red out drops, as these drops have additives in them that help constrict blood vessels on the eye to make the eyes appear whiter. Unfortunately, these additives have a rebound effect where the eyes often get more red and more irritated after you use them. Second is using any generic eye drops that contain a preservative known as BAK or benzalkonium chloride. This is a very potent preservative, works well as a preservative, but unfortunately is known to be toxic to the corneal surface. That is why you will always hear doctors recommending preservative free eye drops or to be looking for a newer eye drop that is preserved with something other than BAK. This video is not sponsored in any way, but if you do want to know of a great resource for good eye drops for dry eye and eyelid wipes, then check out the website helpmize.com. Over there, you will find different dry eye eye care routines that I've put together based on severity and different dry eye symptoms. This is a new website that I'm working with as I feel like they are gonna make things a lot more convenient and accessible for eye care. And if you do check out the Help Mize website, please just give me some feedback. Let me know in the comments what you think of that website and that service. Now, bad habit number five, and most people won't know that they're in fact doing this, but do you ever wake up and your eyes are more dry 
right away in the morning. I always try to ask my new dry eye patients this because so many people do in fact sleep with their eyes open, cracked just a tiny little bit. And this leads to repeated bouts of chronic exposure over nighttime that makes it very difficult for the eye to heal. Common ways to manage this include using thicker eye drop gels and nighttime ointments, also looking for sleep masks and even special eyelid tape to keep the eyelids closed while you sleep. Again, there are several brands of all of these, but I'll put some of my favorites in the description below so you can check those out. Bad habit number six comes from either not managing or just simply ignoring other health conditions. This includes autoimmune conditions, diabetes, rosacea, and hormone issues, as all of these can cause dry eyes to get worse or may at least cause a flare-up of your symptoms. So if you do have any other health conditions that you know of, make sure to manage those and keep them in check as that may help prevent future outbreaks of worsening dry eye symptoms. And finally, bad habit number seven. And this is again something that I am occasionally guilty of myself. And just the other weekend, I had a cheat day and allowed myself to enjoy pizza and beer which was delicious, but that next morning I woke up and my eyelids, my whole face felt swollen and puffy. And it's true that our diets and what foods we eat can trigger inflammatory events throughout our whole body. And it's been shown that alcohol can contribute and cause worsening dry eye symptoms for some people. And both diet and nutrition play significant roles for our eye health overall. If you do wanna learn more about how diet affects dry eyes specifically, I did record a live stream several weeks ago and I'll put a link to that video up over here to the side so you can check that out. Either way though, I hope that this video brings you some awareness to things that could be going on in your life that may be making your dry eyes worse. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Keep an eye on it and we'll see you in that video.